Playhouse presents Dick Powell, Charles Boyer, David Niven, Ida Lupino. Thank you, Mac. Any questions? No, sir. This is your parole officer, Mr. Hopewell. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Mr. Hopewell, I give you Frank Hepp. Elias Count George Keglovich, Elias Baron von Kalgun Hedelau, Elias Paul Pierre Montescu, Elias Prince Nikolai Timofayevich. Ah, that's all. And I hope you will be able to manage him. I think we get along all right if Mr. Hepp appreciates his freedom. Oh, I do, sir. Although one could raise the question, what is freedom? According to Aristotle, no man is free. Now, my countryman, Dickard... Uh, you are being released on parole, Mr. Hepp. Do you know what parole means? Parole, sir, is the liberation of a person from prison conditional upon good behavior prior to the end of the maximum sentence of that person. You speak like a lawyer. I am a lawyer, sir. Yep. I acquired my diploma at the University of Leipzig, Germany, in 1932. Oh, cut it out, Hep. Do you have the diploma? Unfortunately, it got lost. Could you get a duplicate? The university was destroyed in the bombings of 1944. All right, Hep. All right. I can see now you trapped your victims. Those silly women. I beg your pardon, sir? I've never trapped anyone. I've always considered myself the benefactor of lonesome, unloved women. If they happen to be rich. Rich women can be unhappy too, sir. And to the most unhappy ones, I gave the priceless illusion of being young and beautiful and desirable. But you lied to them, Hep. Don't we all, sir? Don't nice husbands tell their tired old fading wives that they are beautiful and desirable? Your baby. Take him away. You'll report to my office twice a month. Yes, sir. You're not to leave the state. You'll keep away from bars, nightclubs, and hotel lobbies. And of course, above all, you'll keep away from women. You mean completely? I mean that for the next six months, if you as much as talk to a well-to-do woman of any age or shape, you'll find yourself back in jail before you can say, I love you. Is that clear? Too clear, sir. Hello, Albert. Welcome home, sir. Your new home. Any home is an old home if your face greets me, Albert. Very kind of you to say so. May I have your suitcase? Thank you. Nice place, Albert. I did the best I could. It was only a week ago that I received your notice about your possible return. I had to take the first furnished house I could find. You know, it reminds me of that beautiful villa we had on the Riviera. Remember? And very pleasantly so. I hope you'll find that this house is comfortable. I've unpacked your things, your pictures, your books, your clothes. I'm very pleased, Albert. That's a beautiful mansion there. Yes. Who lives there? I don't know. I've never seen anyone around. Uh, may I pour you a drink? Oh, thank you. Uh, pour yourself one, too. Uh, not while I'm on duty. <laughs> Thank you. Caviar? Oh, that'd be very nice. You found the prison comfortable? Fair, but fair, comparatively speaking, of course. And the food, it was satisfactory? Well, a bit on the starchy side, if you know what I mean, but quite tasty. Not as good, of course, as it was in the Paris jail or in Vienna. Yes, I recall you telling me about the beautiful Wiener Schnitzel. Ah. Well, here is to our past. And to your future. Well, very pleasant room. Yes, southern exposure. How much money do we have left? We have enough for two months. That bad. Well, I'm not worried about that. You can easily find new hunting grounds. Not this time. I want parole, remember? My hunting license has been revoked. Oh, that's a shame. Perhaps it's better this way. I slipped badly on that last case. 
It could be that I'm losing my touch. Oh, I wouldn't say that, but perhaps it is time for a change to something less hazardous. You're not uh, implying that I am uh, getting... Mellow. Mellow is the word. Mellow? Like a beautiful September day. Let's not be sentimental about it, Albert. I agree with you. American law enforcement is somewhat peculiar about breach of promise. Yes, they definitely have a tendency to overprotect women. Yes, but you have so many other talents, your skill in different handwritings, your business promotion. In other words, goodbye ladies, rich, lovely ladies. My heart bleeds for you, but that is a wise decision. Hello. Yes, madam. Who is it, Albert? A lady. Well, ask her to come in. Would you come in? Thank you. I hope I'm not intruding. Not at all. I'm Miss Rowland, your next door neighbor. From that uh, beautiful mansion there? Yes, that's my home. Won't you come in, please? Thank you. Do sit down. I am Victor de la Fontaine. How do you do, Mr. de la Fontaine? How do you do, Miss Rowland? I saw smoke coming from your chimney, and I knew someone must have moved in. So I thought I'd drop in to pay my respects. Was it the proper thing to do? But of course, neighbors should get acquainted. I never know the rules, but I've watched this house. And I don't have much else to do. I live alone, you see. And when I saw the smoke, it was so nice to see smoke coming from the chimney. Can I offer you something? A drink? Oh, no, I'm not supposed to do that. I just wanted to say hello to you and to your wife. I'm afraid I can't produce a wife just now. You see, I am a bachelor. Oh, goodness gracious. I shouldn't have come. Even I know that. Goodbye, Mr. De La Fontaine. Please, Miss Ro Sir. Yes? The gentlemen do not look into ladies' handbags. I've always been intrigued by ladies' handbags. They contain their hearts and minds, and sometimes their... Bank books. Please, not on the first day of your parole. Purely academic interest, Albert. No, it can't be. Why, it is. Albert, look at that balance. Jenny Rowland, get me the who's who. Rowland? Rowland, I think I know. Here it is. There, Daniel Rowland. One child, Jenny. She is the sole heiress to the tremendous Roland lumber fortune. Next door to me. A naive, lonely woman. A duck, Albert. A beautiful sitting duck. But the parole officer. He'll never know about it. I can always go over to our house through the garden, in the back. You're aware of the danger. I'll take my chances. I'm not getting any younger. I'm going to return the bag immediately. Get me a suit. Who will you be? A nice, conservative gentleman, of course. A nice, conservative gentleman. Coming up. A very interesting looking, very impressive looking gentleman. Oh, he was. He was my grandfather. And he loved lumber. He loved wood. The oldest, the noblest of all building materials. That's what Daddy used to say. You have a lot in common. Now, when did he die? He passed away 20 years ago, and my mother just recently. Oh, it must be very exacting for a young woman like you to take care of this huge lumber empire. Oh, there isn't any empire anymore. When people started using steel and concrete, Daddy got mad, sold out, and retired here. Just the three of us. He didn't even allow visitors. And after he died? Then just the two of us, my mother and I. That's what Daddy wanted. Besides, I was a sickly child. I spent years and years in bed. Rheumatic heart, you know. Oh. Well, I'm glad to see you have outgrown it. <laughs> That's what Dr. Washburn says. He comes to see me every week. Every week? Oh, you'd better watch out, Miss Roland. Perhaps he's interested in your heart in more ways than one. Oh, no. He's old and married. Besides... I'm plain-looking. 
Don't you think I'm plain looking? No, Miss Rowland. Then my mother was wrong. She always told me that. But she thought I had a beautiful soul. It's nice to have a beautiful soul, but does it show? It does. Well, you're just being nice. You mean I'm just pretending to be nice? Yes. Why should I be doing that? I don't know. Perhaps because you are nice. Oh, isn't that silly? No, 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 Miss Rowland, you're right. Only really nice people can pretend to be nice successfully. You know, Mr. De La Fontaine, that's very profound. It sounds like something out of a book. You know what? This whole thing, that I'm here with a gentleman of the world, all alone in the house, the whole thing is out of a book. A dangerous book. Do you read a great deal? I do. How else would I learn about people? I don't see any. French poems, too. Mm. Do you read French? Just a little. Il pleure dans mon cœur comme il pleut sur la ville. Quelle est cette langueur qui pénètre mon cœur? Pretty. Well, it's getting late. I'd better be going. Oh, it's beautiful. I understand it now. It has meaning. Oh, you have such a beautiful voice. <laughs> Please. Can you play the piano? Oh, not very well. I didn't quite finish at the conservatoire in Paris. Oh, please, play something for me. Some other time. It's getting late. No, it isn't. I don't want you to go now or ever... I don't think a lady should say a thing like that. That comes from being lonely, Miss Rowland. That's all. I know what it is. I'm pretty lonely myself. Everything. I didn't think you'd know Jeannie with the light brown hair. It's such an old song. You know why I played it? Because my name is Jenny. Because you have such beautiful light brown hair. I thought it was just plain old hair. No, it is beautiful. You know, I think you should wear some earrings, or a necklace perhaps. You do have some jewelry, don't you? Oh, yes. That is, Mother had them. I don't even know what kinds and how many. Daddy thought they were a good investment. Are they around? Oh, yes. Would you like to see them? Oh, I'd love to, if it isn't too much trouble. I've seen them recently. In a box or a drawer. All kinds of stones. Red and blue. White and green, too. Oh, yes. Now, let me think. Where on earth did I put them? I can't remember now. Isn't that silly? Some other time. You mean there'll be another time? If you wish. Tomorrow? Come earlier. I shall, Miss Roland. Jenny? With the light brown hair. Evening, Gilbert. May I inquire about the state of affairs over there? Everything fine. Just fine. Is anything wrong? Yes, it's too easy. Well... I suppose you can't have everything. And now, for the first time, I am alive. Alive with a feeling of expectancy. My former life has begun to fade as if it never existed. Inside, I tremble. I doubt. And I hope. Come in. How? 
You found them. Do you like them? Oh. Oh, why, they're, they're exquisite. I don't know if I picked the right ones. There are more? Oh, yes. Well, bring them out. We'll look them over together. Shall we? Why are you so good to me? Why do you come here every day? Well, uh, don't you want me to? I do, and I know why. But why do you do it? I have wanted to ask you that every time I've seen you. Why didn't you? Because I... Oh, I don't know how to play this game. I don't know who should ask whom. I don't know the rules. They never taught me anything. You're the first man I've ever really known. I don't know if you like me or what you think of me. And I want to know, and I'm afraid to know. I... And I'll love you till the day I die. Jenny. Jenny. And I'd like to wake up like this. Every morning of my life. You haven't touched your breakfast. I don't want it. What is it, the sitting duck? Yes. This is not hunting, Albert. This is butchering. I can't do it. I don't know, she inhibits me. She, she brings out things in me. Domestic felicity. She affects me the same way. You've seen her only once. We've been having lively conversations over the back fence. She has a beautiful soul. I've never gone in heavily for souls. There's always a first time. What are you talking about? Come on. It begins with you getting on your knees and ends with you owning half of her property. Get out. You know, just think of a wintry night uh, with a fire roaring in the open hearth and she bringing you your golden slippers studded with diamonds. Get out. No, but uh, think of the rain beating on the roof and the patter of little feet. Well, how do I look? Very marriageable. Good luck. Thank you, Albert. In a hurry, Mr. Hepp? Why, Mr. Hopewell. Oh, so you remember me. Yes, Mr. Hopewell, but uh, couldn't we talk some other time? I have an important interview. A job, perhaps? Yes. It can wait. Well, it's very unfortunate that the state should interfere with my rehabilitation. Oh, cut it, Hepp. There will be no job. I just had a talk with your would-be employer, Miss Rowland. What did you tell her? I briefed her on your background and explained the possible motives behind your romantic interests. I think she understood. You're coming with me. How, how did she take it? Not very well, I'm afraid. I had to call her doctor. Well, get your things, Mr. Hepp. Excuse me. How are you, Mr. De La Fontaine? Well, how are you? Yes. I am Dr. Washburn. Miss Roland wants to see you. Oh, no, Doctor. He's coming with me. I'm afraid Miss Roland has priority. Her heart. She's dying. She is. See what you've done. This is nobody's doing. Her days were numbered. I've been expecting this for some time. You may come in now. I won't stay long. She hasn't long. Don't look so gloomy. Sit down, Mr. Hepp. Oh, 
I'm not Mr. Hep. I knew it couldn't be true. You don't look like someone who could be called Hep. I'm not. I told that man he was wrong. That he was talking about someone else. A completely different person. I used to know him. He always impersonated me. He must have been a bad man. Very bad. Hopeless. Uh, Mr. Hopewell. Yes? I'd like you to tell Miss Rowland you made a mistake. Yes, miss. I can see it now. Just a superficial resemblance. This gentleman is Victor de La Fontaine, a French nobleman. Not an imposter like your head. My mistake. I'm very sorry, miss. I'm so glad that it wasn't my money you were after. No, it was always you, Jenny. Sweet, exciting, beautiful Jenny. I'm not beautiful. You're more than beautiful. Because you don't know it. Here. It's for you. I knew this was to happen at any time. So the other day I made up a will. Because I love you. You've never said you loved me. I'm saying it now. Is it really true? I mean, very, very true. Yes, Jenny. How true? I can't tell it in, in words. How can you tell it? alone, Jenny. You'll never be alone again. We'll be together from now on. Just you and I. Not you and I. Just you with a memory. Oh, I do hope I'll be an attractive memory. Yes, my darling. Forever young. Forever beautiful. By Jenny. With... With... All right, Mr. Hopewell, we can go now. No, go on home. And watch your step. Thanks. Monsieur de la Fontaine. Help is the name, sir. 